How does the dinosaur look that could survive until now? Did the whales always look like we see them today? What for a strange creature the Chilean residents saw? Now you'll learn and see everything. Smart Pizza is with you. In this edition, I'll show you the most unusual creatures caught on camera in Africa and other countries. We start with the shot my subscriber sent me. This time, it's not a usual photo, but a shot with its own story. It originates far away from City Hassle, right in the heart of one of the African forests. One day, six travelers went for one of the most exciting adventures of their lifetime. These people were always looking for something peculiar and magical. Several days long, they tried to penetrate deeply into the thick forest, and each step was becoming even more breathtaking. Anyway, they were not prepared for what they saw on the third day of their journey. One of the travelers noticed something unknown and frightening between old trees and called his colleague. They started to approach the weird object together, but that didn't clear up the situation. In much likelihood, everything was exactly the opposite. The people made out a monster, a very big one with an ugly body and foul smell. The creature was obviously dead, but nobody understood who and in what way put it out of the way. The shots were at once sent to the research centers. However, no one of the scientists gave at least some answers to the questions. Everybody just spread their hands and said they had no idea who that was. Mokale Mbembe Now I'll tell you about a monster almost each African resident knows. Though it's as mystical as our last guess, we can at least judge by its life based on the ancient legends. So dinosaurs died out dozens of millions of years ago. However, as the Africans consider, some dinosaurs still inhabit our Earth. It's all about Mekele Mbembe, a monster with the longest neck. Those are not usual scientists, but cryptozoologists who study them. They're interested in monsters described in legends and so on. The creatures they research are cryptids. We're a little bit off topic. Let's come back to our mysterious creature. The name of this dinosaur is translated from Lingala as the one who stops the river course. Why'd they call him this way? There are several versions. They say Mikela Mbembe controls rivers and their inhabitants. They also consider that the monster easily walks even against the river course, which confirms its majesty. There are a lot of versions, but nobody can confirm at least one of them. At the same time, the people living around say the opposite. According to their words, they meet Mikeli Mbembe nearly every year. The cryptid doesn't do them any harm, quietly walking along the river, and goes away when the sun sets, hiding from the human eye. It's not certain where the giant sleeps, or at least spends its day. There have been many expeditions organized, but no one of them was crowned with success. The mysterious creature has four legs, they're short, the hind limbs have three claws, the skin is colored reddish brown and looks like the elephant's or hippo's skin. Needless to say, it could have been written off as an invention and fake long ago. However, the point is that different peoples, even those not contacting with one another, say about Mikela Mbembe almost at the same time. What's more, they describe it equally. This cannot but give a frightening idea. Who knows, maybe that cryptid from Africa is real. They have a family of their kind and so on. You'd never know what the mother nature thought of at some point. What's more, people find real four-legged whales in Egypt. Can it be wondered then? If you haven't understood, these are real remnants of our whale ancestors who had four limbs. This fossilized artifact is some 40 million years old. This tells us that at some point of the evolution, these creatures turned from the herbivorous land, clove-toothed mammals, into predatory and water whales. The peculiar features of the skull of the specimen found point at its ability to move with its mouth more quickly and actively. Judging by everything, the mammal that reached some 10 feet long and weighed 1,300 pounds was one of the most successful predators of all time. But another logical question arises. Why the four-legged whale had to change its habitat? The answer is clear. The thing is that this whale was really strong and dexterous. Anyway, these capabilities were not enough to survive in the future. Even more social or powerful creatures came into the world, 
whose dimensions or claws were stronger than four legs of the whale. Therefore, to survive, the animal had to go underwater and learn how to live there, at first in a hybrid way. In other words, both on land and water. Then they finally settled underwater. Apart from the strange whale, they found a creature with the hardest spine in the world in Africa. As long as you haven't understood who that was, write your assumptions. How the monster can look. Maybe it's a giant. Maybe it's very tall. Just wait. In all likelihood, this is some crocodile, right? A reptile that's very wide and robust, yes? Nothing of this kind, guys. All these guesses are not right. Those are usual shrews that have the most robust spine. Who could think that such tiny, nice and fluffy creatures are able to easily withstand weight on their back equal to that of an adult person? If you ask me, that boggles my mind. It was back in the 20th century when we learned that such superheroes exist who don't wear masks or overcoats. Anyway, they remained unstudied until now. You must admit that it's not the most obvious fact that they're so hardy. It was just in 2013 when people started to approach the subject even closer, and in the end learned that their spine's structure differs from that of all the living and extinct creatures on the Earth. So the vertebrae consist of thousands of the tiniest bulges with the help of which they couple with one another. Due to this feature, the spine acquires abnormal flexibility and ability to withstand colossal loads. The weight is spread so evenly as possible. People don't know what the shrews need it for. It's thought that this feature helps them look for food. They feed on small creatures such as beetles, spiders, and other different inhabitants of hardly accessible places. It's exactly why flexibility is as useful as never in hunting. What's useful for us, humans, is to rub your eyes and get enough sleep to avoid hallucinations and unscheduled falling asleep. Otherwise, while going along the road somewhere in the South African Republic and seeing a werewolf, you won't believe your eyes. A strange creature looking like a half-man and half-dog was wandering along the streets of a provincial town in the Republic of the Company of Other Dogs. The driver of the car couldn't believe in what he saw. It seemed to him that was his fantasy, but the camera didn't lie. Yes, I wouldn't like to be in the shoes of that poor guy. He was about to go crazy at that moment. After all, he had to remain focused. The man was at the wheel. Fortunately for the video author, the werewolf didn't react to unsanctioned shooting and went away. Nobody managed to find out who was that and where it was located at that moment. People had only the video footage that was multiply checked for editing and its authenticity was proved. Proteus Invented or mystical creatures is something incredibly tough, of course. It's always interesting to observe those you don't know anything about. There's also the opposite, negative side here. At the same time, you won't know anything about these monsters. After all, the communication with them ends with some legend or footage. The same can be said for real strange creatures our scientists find in the course of time. They appear out of a clear sky and surprise everybody who has at least a slight interest in them. Proteus is one such unusual monster. It's no slug, no reptile, and even no ghost, but an unusual salamander that, in contrast to its relatives, refused from fresh air and sunlight and chose to live underwater. What's come out of that? You can look for yourself. The amphibian completely lost its color, which strikes the eye at first sight. Secondly, Proteus exchanged its sight for improving other senses. Its eyes are overgrown with skin and are able to make out just lightning. On the other hand, the amphibian has sharper smell, hearing and sensitivity to electrical fields things we do for a good orientation in underwater conditions. This is not all our hero lost to be happy. Along with sight, it said goodbye to the land way of life. To make swims, the animal chose the swimming technique for the footless. Move your body as an eel does and swim forward. For the sake of truth, it's worth noting that you're not likely to catch it in such a movement because it spends most of its time on the bottom, not showing any signs of life at all. In all likelihood, as scientists consider, it's connected to the lack of necessity to migrate constantly as well as the corresponding hunting style. Like a crocodile, Proteus hides in an ambush and then attacks its prey in a single jerk. By the way, here's another important movement. There are not so many crustaceans and other small creatures deeply. 
That's why such a passive way of life allows it to keep calories and succeed in survival. The amphibian had this energy-saving skill honed to such an extent that it's able to live without food for 10 years. This is much more than all the brethren live. Whereas they live just a little more than a couple of years, these 12-inch guys can exist for up to 100 years. Polish Mermaid Do you believe in mermaids? In these fine creatures with a striking beauty and singing? Seems to me that statistics will show 50 to 50. However, the figures will definitely change. It shows a group of scientists somewhere in Poland who accurately came to one of the shores and took out a mermaid. In all likelihood, the creature was unconscious. Either it collapsed because of faintness or died completely. Be that as it may, this body may be a revolutionary finding you should cling to with all your might. That's why they arrived here at the first opportunity in protective suits. They took this mermaid, put it in the wheelchair, and brought it to the car. What's curious, as the author said, when this video found its place on the web, they tried to block it several times. It's somebody from the government who gave the strike. One more time, that suggests something strange. Later on, when the authorities were asking something on the score that caused no reaction, apparently that was nothing at all, just editing and an invention and so on. If you ask me, I don't believe in it for some reason. It looks natural without anything unnecessary. What? More frankly speaking, I believe in mermaids as well. It was not for nothing that the ancient seamen told people that such tailed monsters exist. The only thing is that there used to be no evidence, whereas now, in all likelihood, they're present. Mysterious Flying Creature One summer evening, a group of friends decided to walk around a local park in Chile. The sun was about to set, and mild twilight light descended on the park. People enjoyed the fresh air and a calm atmosphere, and being in the company of one another. Suddenly, they heard a whistle from afar. Initially, the friends thought it was some wild animal, and they had nothing to worry about. But when the sound started to approach closer and closer, everybody felt uneasy. Surprisingly for everybody, a mysterious monster landed near them all. It was huge with wings, a tail, beak, and claws. It looked like an animal from a fairy tale, half reptile and half bird. Its eyes were sparkling in the darkness, scales shone, reflecting the light of the nearest lamps. Surprise and fear overcame the group of friends. Fortunately, one of them had a middle-sized stone right under his feet. He took it and hit at the bird reptile with it. It instantly jumped away and soared back into the sky a couple of seconds later. Soon after this incident, another eyewitness appeared who encountered the monster on the road. The reptile landed just in front of the car and nearly to cause a car accident. Fortunately, the man managed to brake timely. There are many theories about who that could have been. Some think that that was a gargoyle. Others tell about the famous Mothman. It's a pity that nobody caught on camera the hero of the day. In addition, according to what one of the experts say, that could have been not a living creature, but somebody from the parallel universe or other dimensions. After all, if you trace the trend of their appearances, some trouble took place after all. As if the monsters tried to warn people to do something to make us have second thought, but the humanity didn't understand the hints. By the way, it's the same as what we see in this story. In 2009, soon after these incidents, some shooting took place in the town. As a result, many innocent people suffered. Is it a coincidence? I don't think so. You've all heard about the Loch Ness Monster. However, something strange can live not only in the Irish Lake. Iceland has its own oddities. Look at what an eyewitness filmed in this country. The creature, that was nicknamed Nessie's brother, moved down the water in broad daylight. As you can see, it's very long and at the same time wide. It couldn't have been some huge snake because there simply aren't any in Iceland. It's also definitely not a shark. But what is it? An unknown creature or just a trick of the eye? What do you think? As it turned out, the Loch Ness Monster has several brothers. Another one was discovered in Alaska a few years ago. A resident of this American state filmed a 16-foot something swimming in the local Chenna River. You have to admit that there is a similarity here with a floating mystery that was stumbled upon in Iceland. This creature is also long, wide, and completely incomprehensible. 
It just swims on the surface. It doesn't raise its head so that we recognize it. Someone thinks that there's nothing to recognize here and that the Alaskan resident filmed some pieces of ice that stuck to the rope. Someone even thinks that this creature is not moving, but is in place moving under the influence of the current. But there are also those who believe that a real river monster lives in Alaska, which is worth being afraid of. Who do you believe more? Next up is something truly frightening. Tourists were traveling in Israel, reached a cliff by the seashore and decided to film the beautiful views. But instead, they filmed something else. On a rock, in the shallow water, someone flashed by. There was clearly something alive. It was moving. The tourists didn't realize who it was at first, but then they looked closer and zoomed in. It was a real mermaid. She turned around, realized that she was spotted, and quickly disappeared into the water. It was really creepy, especially the way she turned around and looked directly into the camera. Comments on this were once again turned out to be ambiguous. Someone thought that the guys filmed a seal. But what does the seal in Israel have to do with it? These pinnipeds live in cold waters. Maybe it really was a mermaid or something similar to her. Besides, this is not the only case when a mermaid was caught on camera. For example, in this case, the author of the video found a strange skeleton on the riverbank. It was crushed by a rock. Apparently, that's how the creature died. Pay attention to the shape of the skeleton. It's exactly how we imagine mermaids to be like. What if it was not a fake, but the skeleton of a real mermaid, or a creature on the basis of which the image of a mermaid was invented? As for me, anything's possible. If the previous stories can still be doubted, then this one is definitely true. The friends were surfing not far from the shore when suddenly a giant squid clung to them. It clung to them in the truest sense of the word. The huge cephalopod decided to attack one of the surfers. It cautiously swam up to him and grabbed the board with its huge tentacles. At first, the guy tried to fight back and hold on. But in the end, he had to jump straight to the monster. In a panic, he immediately climbed back in so that the giant squid would need him. Of course, this would not have happened. These cephalopods do not eat people. But you have to admit that it's not very pleasant to be near such a huge and creepy creature. What the surfer experienced was creepy, but the following footage is even creepier and, more importantly, mysterious. Ryland Rubens was surfing on the waves when suddenly a mysterious, spider-like creature appeared in the same wave with him. It was carried away by the waves just at the moment when Ryland was nearby. The surfer didn't even notice the creature, but it was for the best. He would have freaked out, fallen off his board, and gone straight for it. But what is it anyway? What kind of mystical creature decided to surf with Ryland? Could it have been a harmless sea beast just yet unexplored? Or did a prototype of some creepy mythical creature get caught on camera? Share your thoughts in the comments. A boat captain was cruising near the coast of North Carolina, USA, when suddenly something strange caught his attention. Some kind of creature was moving on the water and it baffled everyone who saw it. What was it? One could assume that a python, a crocodile, or even a whale had wandered into the water, but all these versions are unlikely. The creature is very plastic for a whale, too long for a crocodile, and the shape doesn't really resemble that of a snake. Some viewers have suggested that it could be something prehistoric, some creature that we've long considered extinct. To me, that seems possible. Do you remember the mysterious flying creature that frightened the passers-by? Possibly it was somebody from the next heroes of our episode. Golden Eagle The Golden Eagle is a real weapon, and a living one at that. It's hard not to fear and respect this bird. The Golden Eagle is the largest eagle in the world and an amazing bird of prey belonging to the Accipitridae family. Its wingspan reaches almost 2.5 meters, and its weight reaches 7 kilograms. At the same time, the Golden Eagle can grow to almost a meter in length. This is very impressive for a flying bird, but that's not all. The golden eagle can boast powerful paws with sharp claws, as well as incredible speed. Having spotted its prey, the golden eagle dives after it and can reach speeds up to 320 kilometers per hour. Even a speedy cheetah will seem like a snail in comparison with this bird. Here a golden eagle is hunting a hare. It doesn't even have to develop a monstrous speed. The golden eagle is flying relatively calmly after the hare while it's running away at full speed. But it's no use running away from the golden eagle. 
the bird captures its prey easily. The situation here is approximately the same. The white hare takes it on the lamb, but the golden eagle calmly flies up to its prey and neutralizes it. Hares make up a large part of the golden eagle's diet, but these birds also prey on larger creatures, for example, foxes. In this footage, the fox is trying to fight off the bird. Notice how huge the golden eagle is in comparison with the not insignificant fox, but all in vain. The golden eagle got its claw into the victim's body and the fox immediately fell down. The golden eagle, on the other hand, continued to press on the wound, neutralizing the victim to the end. Not only foxes and hares, but even wolves are afraid of these winged killers. It's hard to believe that a bird at all can cope with such a dangerous and large animal, but the golden eagle manages it. Although this footage is not of the best quality, we can see how a golden eagle dives masterfully at a wolf, knocking it down. The footage soon cuts off, but it appears that the golden eagle didn't let go of the wolf, but just continued to sink its claws into its prey. Golden eagles often hunt in the mountains. There, they can not only dive on their opponents or catch them between rocks, but also finish them off in a more sophisticated way. Golden eagles pick up large prey and throw it off the cliff. Then the only thing to do is to fly up to the body and start eating. Fortunately, golden eagles have a neutral relationship with people. Golden eagles are even wary of humans and do not settle near residential areas, so these birds almost never attack humans. But sometimes it still happens. For example, in this footage, a golden eagle attacked a girl in Kyrgyzstan. Apparently, it saw her as prey. Luckily, there were adults nearby who chased the bird away. The girl herself, though, sustained several injuries and recovered very quickly. As you can see, golden eagles attack just about anyone. Peregrine falcons are pickier in this regard. They're also very dangerous birds. The peregrine falcon is, of course, inferior to the golden eagle in size, reaching 50 centimeters in length and 120 centimeters in wingspan. But this bird of prey of the falcon's family is ahead of the golden eagle in speed. It's the fastest bird on the planet. The peregrine falcon can reach speeds of over 322 kilometers per hour during a dive. The peregrine falcon has very sharp and strong claws. If during the hunt the peregrine falcon does not miss, then the impact of such claws at insane speeds guarantees death. Even big game may have its head blown off after such an attack. But the peregrine falcon rarely attacks large animals. Unlike the golden eagle, it hunts practically only birds, and it does it very professionally. Look how beautifully a peregrine falcon cuts the path of a pigeon and catches it right on the fly. This pigeon is definitely not alive anymore. The camera hardly keeps up with the movements of the peregrine falcon that spotted a new prey, another bird. It didn't manage to catch it on the counterattack, the prey dodged. The peregrine falcon turned around and sharply caught the bird and dragged it to the nest to feed its young. And here's another example of a typical peregrine falcon hunt. As a rule, it doesn't chase its prey, it stalks it, and then lifts up over the prey and swiftly dives down, striking the prey with its claws. Usually such tactics are enough to kill the prey, but if it proves to be a survivor, the peregrine falcon can always finish it off right in flight with its beak. In this footage, a peregrine falcon efficiently destroys a red-tailed hawk in its trademark style. Upward rush, downward dive, and powerful blow. It was made clearly and cleanly. The red-tailed hawk body immediately flew to the ground, where the peregrine falcon ate it. Crowned Eagle by the way, I forgot to say that peregrine falcons are common on all continents except Antarctica. But the crowned eagle is found only in Africa. Here it's considered the king of all birds. In general, the crowned eagle is often included in the list of the most dangerous birds on the planet. This amazing bird of prey weighs about 7 kilograms and has a 2-meter wingspan. Like the golden eagle and the peregrine falcon, it has very powerful claws and lightning-fast attacks. All this helps the crowned eagle to hunt even such large animals as monkeys. Usually, the crowned eagle stalks its prey while sitting in a tree. When it sees suitable prey, it jumps off the branch and quickly flies down. But sometimes it takes off to fly through dense trees, as in this case with the monkey. Despite its huge wings and many obstacles in the form of branches and leaves, the eagle masterfully captures its prey. Not too heavy prey is carried by the crowned eagle to a nest 
or high up in a tree where it eats it completely, along with the bones. By the way, these birds are not only elite and ruthless predators, but also amazing dancers. With the beginning of the nesting period, the male is the first to perform the mating dance. If the female likes the dance, it joins the dancer. It's as if the birds are playing with each other. The male flies toward the female and it stretches its claws forward. They claw together and perform acrobatic tricks in the air. It looks cool. Harpy Eagle the harpy eagle, on the other hand, is not such a fan of dancing. It just wants to hunt. This bird is named after the ancient Greek harpies for a reason. These predatory creatures are first-class assassins, keeping air and ground dwellers in fear. The South American harpy eagle belongs to the Ecipetridae family. It's believed to be the heaviest eagle in the world because the harpy eagle weighs up to 9 kilograms. The harpy eagle is not as fast as the golden eagle or the peregrine falcon, but it makes up for its speed by brute force and ruthlessness. South American harpy eagles easily hunt big creatures. Their main meal is sloths. As you understand, it's not difficult to capture such a slow creature, but the harpy eagle does it with particular elegance. See for yourself. A perfect abduction and a terrific hunt. Like the crowned eagle, the harpy eagle is not averse to eating monkeys. The principle of the hunt is similar. The South American eagle stalks its prey, plummets from the tree and flies to it through branches and leaves, grabbing the monkey firmly. After that, the harpy eagle can drag the body to the nest, where it shares a treat with its chicks or eats it itself. These birds of prey nest very high in the crowns of up to 75 meters above the ground. By the way, the hunting territory of these birds extends over dozens of square kilometers. So, any animal in the territory risks becoming prey to the threatening eagle. And once, just two harpy eagles kept an entire island of monkeys at bay. Scientists took two of them to borrow Colorado Island in the Panama Canal. The place was a paradise for great numbers of primates until a couple of birds of prey arrived. The harpy eagles began to hunt the apes, so much so that the apes had to fight their way out. Eventually, the apes learned to communicate with each other using distinctive sounds to alert them of the approaching feathered predators. When the harpy eagle was spotted, the males cried out loudly and the females and babies hurried to hide in the bushes. Such unusual monkey signaling saved the primates and their population on Barrow, Colorado Island did not become extinct. And one more bird in this episode. It looks like this. It's called a pitahui. It's quite a small bird weighs not so much, and its wingspan is obviously not the same as that of golden eagles. Nevertheless, this bird is dangerous enough, and all because it's poisonous. Yeah, as it turns out, there are poisonous birds in the world, and Pitahui is one of the few. The poison of these New Guinean creatures is not self-produced. Pitahuis get it from their diet by eating special bugs. As a result, they produce Batrachotoxin, the same poison is the golden poison frogs, which are bright, beautiful, but highly toxic creatures. Pitahuis themselves are not affected by the poison. The bird's organism is adapted to it. But for other creatures, Pitahuis is a dangerous creature. Getting into the body of small animals, Pitahuis poison can kill it in minutes. Especially it's not easy for monkeys, monitor lizards, and some representatives of the felines they often become victims of pitahuis. The poison of these birds is also dangerous for humans, although it's not considered lethal. But the consequences are still not pleasant. The toxic poison of birds causes burning, numbness of limbs, and even paralysis. The good news is that pitahui doesn't attack people, and it's extremely difficult to catch the bird because it has excellent reaction and high flight speed. That's all, guys. Which birds do you like the most? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you later.